And now to the Caribbean, to Dominica, which was one of the five West Indies associated states. Since 1967, Dominica had been internally self-governing, with the United Kingdom responsible for foreign affairs and defense. On November the 3rd, she gained her independence and became one of the world's smallest nations. The independence ceremony was attended by Princess Margaret, who presented the members of the nation turned out to watch the spectacle. For most people, it was their first chance to see the princess, who flown in from Barbados, with her regal diamond tiara and necklace. its independence, and it's thought that Dominica's will trigger a chain reaction, which could result in the four other British-associated states in the Caribbean following suit within the next year. At three minutes to midnight, the Union Jack, which had flown over the island for 195 years, was lowered for the last time. Then the moment of independence. The new flag of Dominica and the still night air was raised. Today, 485 years to the day since Columbus first set foot on these shores, and more than 200 years since the outstanding beauty of your island attracted the first settlers from Europe. And having enjoyed full internal self-government as a state in association with the United Kingdom since 1967, Dominica moves to independence. This last step is a courageous one. It gives me great pleasure to be able to hand over to you these constitutional instruments on behalf of the Queen, the formal expression of your independence. Symbolic of the anticlimactic air was the close of the firework display. It lacked the expected spectacular finale, and the official guests didn't seem to know when it was time to leave. Dominica's decided to adopt the republic, with the head of state having a purely ceremonial role. The effective ruler of the island was the Prime Minister, Patrick John, a moderate socialist who's headed the ruling Labour Party since 1974. He's a man with a reputation for toughness. He negotiated development aid worth $20 million from Britain. No one has sought to believe the island desperately needs. We are seeing the future of Dominica under independence. Dominica is a very small country with limited resources. We believe that after independence, it is imperative on our nation to utilize the human resources that we've got and also our natural, natural resources. resources. We are going to concentrate on, on harnessing our water, water resources, resources, our timber industry, industry and, and diversification of our agricultural potential. potential. And, how and how do you, you see your position, position in the rest of the world? Do uh, you, you intend, intend to join the United Nations? Nations and we intend to join the United Nations, Nations the, the Com British, British Commonwealth of Nations, Nations the International Monetary Fund, Fund and the Organization for American States and also United Nations. We will all, however, cooperate with the members in the Caribbean region on most of our points. Now, there has been some... Dominica has often been called a beleaguered paradise for the islands close to bankruptcy. In spite of its long association with Britain, there's virtually no conspicuous development. There are no trains or public buses, and the government controls housing, jobs and business. In fact, most of the 75,000 inhabitants have little more than the weather to be thankful for. Many of the homes in the tiny, tumble-down cabin of Rosso have no running water, and women still take their washing down the river. Unemployment is as high as 20%, with nearly as many again working only a few hours a day.
The island is 47 kilometers long and about half as wide, with only a quarter of the land under cultivation. Throughout the country, most people live barely at subsistence level. Women forage for fallen coconuts or collect the empty shells, which, once burned, become a source of charcoal for cooking fires. The island state of Dominica will quite literally become a banana republic. 75 cents in every dollar the country earns comes from these plantations, and most of the crop goes straight for sale to Britain. Dominica is the second biggest producer of bananas in the Caribbean, and it's in the growth of this production and its expanding citrus industry that she sees the future. The other great money spinner of the Caribbean, tourism, is severely limited at the moment by Dominica's Melville Hall Airport, for it's not big enough for jets to land. The airport's situated in one of the most remote parts of the island, which means a tortuous two-hour drive to the capital, though the lush tropical scenery on the way helps to make it all worthwhile. about 24,000 visitors a year, a surprisingly small number for a place in such an appealing spot on the map. Tourists go to the Dominica's had her share of bloodshed and political extremism. A shortage of jobs and school leaders at the time led to general violence and lawlessness. Harsh measures have been introduced, and the opposition calls a dictatorship of fear. In recent years, there was a guerrilla band known as the Dreads, who killed three whites in a wave of black power terror. Such unrest is an indication of the difficulties Dominique. Personal must criticism of yourself uh, from the opposition, the opposition about the, the way that you've gone about independence. There was a suggestion that you should have called an election to get election a fresh mandate, as, as it were, independence. for Independence we Day. What do you say to that? In the Dominican Labour Party's manifesto in 1975, when the election was held here, one of the points in our manifesto was a question of seeking independence for the people. During the election at that time, there was a spate of violence and disorder in the country. And therefore, my government concentrated more on bringing back law and order um, in the country and campaigned on law and order instead of mentioning about independence. But as far as the status of this association with Britain is concerned, there are three ways in which it can be done, either by... Um, British, the Brit, uh, British government and ourselves terminate, having an agreement in terminating the association by a referendum or by joining with another Caribbean state. And both the British government and ourselves accepted the fact that it was time that Dominica should be liberated. How important is it going to be in the future that you maintain ties with Britain? We will continue to uh, maintain our traditional ties with Britain and try to develop Closer cooperation with Britain after independence. If the opposition party is right and the people are unhappy, then there's the real possibility of a future uprising. Patrick John must attract development capital from international agencies to balance the island's budget and to develop its natural resources. Increased prosperity will provide the means to train and employ the disillusioned young. And on this rests the question of whether Dominica will be able to enjoy the responsibility that independence entails.